and welcome to the news at noon. First, the highlight. Governor Sawalu pledges commitment towards sustainable eco-friendly initiative. Place your state governments declares three day of mourning for victims of school building collapse. And on the foreign scene, world leaders express solidarity with former U.S. President Donald Trump after assassination attack. And in sports, Uruguay defeats Canada on penalties to clinch third place on playoff in Copa America. Now the news in details. I am Timmy Dio Anthony. The local state governor of Abadjde Sumulu has pledged his administration's commitment towards sustainable eco-friendly initiatives and planting of 5,000 trees within the next one year. Governor Sumulu made pledge at the Lagos State Tree Planting Day event for the theme Nature Our Future held at the Lagos House Marina. The governor called for more collaboration from the private sector to increase tree planting to about 25,000 in one year and stressed the need to take conserva conservation and conversation around climate change to all residents of states to protect the earth's environment and calm the search for climate change. Earlier in his opening remarks, Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources to Kumbo Wahab who noted that the state government has embarked on various interventions to protect the environment, urge residents to own the environment, disease from improper waste disposal, indiscriminate cutting of trees, blockage of drainage channels, and all other acts that are against the sanity of the environment. The general manager of Lagos State Park and Gardens Agency, Adetun Popola, said the state government is committed to planting 5,000 trees with the expectation that corporate organizations and private sector to plant 2,000 trees in one year. Highlight of the event was the presentation of certificates of tree planting to Governor Vajde Sumulu and his wife, Ibijoke, Deputy Governor Obafemi Amsat, and his wife. Ferry, as well as other stakeholders. Now, our correspondent Adiola Akinele reports that tree planting was carried out simultaneously across all the local governments and local council development area of the state. In a significant move to avert severe congestion by articulated trucks and improve the efficiency of logistics operation within the Lekki Equa Free Trade Zone corridor, Lagos State Government has announced the commencement of the e-call up system for managing truck movements within the access from 1st of August 2024. Commissioner for Transportation, Uluwashi Mwosiemi, who made this call, stated that the move is driven by the urgent need to implement a sustainable, effective and technology driven solution of truck movement in the Lekki Airport Corridor. As CME said, the application of the e call up system will help synchronize movement of truck assessing the Lekki Deep Soap DC port and other industries within the corridor, stating from Eleko Junction to Lekki Free Trade Zone. He highlighted the state and the federal government plans on road network expansion and intermodal transport system to streamline vehicular traffic and enhance free movement in one of Lagos' most critical economic zones. Also speaking on the development, Special Advisor to the Governor on Transportation, Shola Giwa, who is sided with the enforcement of the e up system of the corridor, mentioned that an interim arrangement is being put in place to decongest the road through evacuation of all illegal tankers from red zone by a joint tax force of the state. LGS, LGA and LCDAs, security agencies and stakeholders ordering truck operators and logistic companies to comply with the new system to ensure its success. The e up system, an advanced digital platform, is designed to regulate the entry and exit of trucks in Lekki Akwa area by scheduling and coordinating their movement. This system will help prevent the chaotic traffic situation often caused by indiscriminate parking and movement of trucks within the corridor. The general manager of Lagos State's Materials Testing Laboratory Agency, Olainka Abdu, says that stiffer measures will be meted out to agents in the rebranding process of testing building materials in Lagos State. Speaking at a meeting with some consultants on malpractices identified in conducting extant rules against the agency, 
have been stated that the LSMCL will not back down on ensuring compliance with guidelines for building safety in Lagos State. Abdul informed that for seamless service devoid of sharp practices, all consultants affiliated to LSMTL in serving notices for material testing on project will be listed on the official website for feasibility and credibility in restoring confidence of professionalism in prospective clientele. She averts that the upcoming overhaul process by the agency will include the use of electronic geographical information system to sort operational modes of testing building materials to cope discrepancies orchestrated by saboteurs as consultants will walk through designated cold zone to fill the agency's operational space. Abdul reiterated that in fulfilling the mandates of Lagos State Government Team Plus agenda, stakeholders in the River Rhine communities of Lagos State should be wary of using soil materials in such geographical area as they have as they have sought constituents that erodes and weaken the steel capacity used in construction processes. Traditional rulers in Lagos State have reiterated their commitment to continuously support the administration of Governor Lantide Somolu in the development agenda of Lagos State and in making Lagos State a 21st century economy. They made this pledge at a three-day retreat for traditional rulers organized by the Ministry of Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs, and Rural Development held recently in Epe, Lagos. The traditional rulers, who affirmed their support for the present administration, also plead with the state government should continue to involve in traditional rulers in governance. Chairman, House Committee on Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs, and Rural Development, Sunny Okolamo, reiterated the key roles of traditional rulers played in governance in ensuring peaceful coexistence and harmonious relationship among diverse people residing in their domains. Earlier, the Commissioner for Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs and Rural Development, Balanchi Fabas, thanked the governor for his inclusive policy, which has allowed traditional rulers to contribute to the development of the state through their wisdom and rich experience. The Permanent Secretary, Kike Lomo Balaiwa, also applauded the unrelenting efforts of the governor in prioritizing traditional institutions in the state, which has en intended ease in the discharge of their roles in traditional rulers. And now to the rest of the stories. The Plateau State Government has declared three days of mourning for lives lost in Saints Academy School building collapse on Friday. No fewer than 22 lives were lost and injuries were sustained by several teachers and students of the school located in Busabuji, just not local government area of the state, when the school building caved in while class was on. In response to the tragic loss of lives and several injuries sustained, the state government ordered that all flags within the states be flown at half mass during the three-day morning, which starts from July 13th to July 15th, in honor of the school building collapse victim. Governor Caleb Muftwang, who visited the school, extended his heartfelt condolences to families affected by the devastating incident and urged citizens to strictly follow building codes and ethics to prevent such tragedies. Mufsuang emphasized the need for all developers and property owners to submit their building plans to the Just Metropolitan Development Board for verification and revalidation as part of efforts enforcement of Executive Order 003. The Nigerian Bar Association section on public interest has issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Inspector General of Police, Kaya Diagbetoko, to stop the directive requiring vehicle owners to register and obtain a central motor information system, CMRIS, certificate for a fee not less than 6,000 naira. NBA Spider questioned the legal basis for Nigeria Police Force issuance of the CMRIS certificate, stating that no law had granted the police the authority to issue such licenses or certificates to vehicle owners following vehicle registration at the appropriate offices. It called on the Inspector General of Police to issue a directive stopping the practice nationwide and the shutdown of the registration websites and physical registration centers with reforms to be made to those who are paid already. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police 
Kaya de Betuku had earlier ordered the enforcement of digitalized central motor registry, registry by July 29, 2024. This, according to him, is to modernize and digitize the, mo the motor vehicle registration system, plus during the nation's safety and security framework. The went open said this ECMR system will make services like change of ownership, license number, license number, engine and chassis border seamless, ensuring that vehicle genuineness, aiding in tracking and recovery of stolen vehicles, and preventing the sales of stolen vehicles to innocent buyers. And now to foreign news. World leaders have reacted with shock to the wounding of former United States President Donald Trump in an assassination attempt against him at an election rally. Presidents and prime ministers globally spoke out against political violence and expressed their support for those affected by the shooting on Saturday, which killed one bystander and left two other spectators critically wounded. The European Union's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, condemned the attack. Also, British Prime Minister Keir Starmer said he is appalled by the shocking scene at the rally. And now to sport. Rugby has defeated Canada on penalty shootouts in the Copa America third place playoff match after a 2 2 draw at the Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Canada's Ismail Khan had a team spot kick saved by goalkeeper Sanjay Ratchet and Alfonso Davis hit the crossbar as Rugby won the shootout 4 3. In the first half, Rodrigo Smash home a kick down from a corner to give Uruguay the lead in the 18th, 18th minute, minute to give Korn score with an acrobatic six successor kick to level the score 14 minutes later. Canada went ahead with 10 minutes left when Korn unleashed a long range shot that Roger part before Jonathan David pounced in to slot home the rebound. <laughs> Just before we go, ensure you make use of your seatbelt while driving. You can also follow us on like all of our social media platform. X, Traffic Radio 961. Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 961 FM. Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch your news and program live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website at www.trafficradio961.ng. Now, did you know? that the Somolu administration provided 450,000 pupils with e-learning devices. You can get more details on the State government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Governor of Abadji Somolu has pledged his administration's commitment towards sustainable, eco-friendly initiatives and planting of 5,000 trees within the next one year. The Fletcher State Government has declared three days of mourning for lives lost in the St. Academy School building collapse on Friday. We also told you that world leaders have reacted with shock to the wounding of former United States President Donald Trump in an assassination attempt against him at an election rally. And in sport, Uruguay has defeated Canada on penalty shootout in the Copa America third place playoff match on Saturday after a 2 2 draw at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. We're going to talk with the newsroom. Please send a message to info at traffic radio 961.mg. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Zaina Adebeshi. I am Timmy Dio Anthony. Many thanks for listening.